Good morning. This is the Reverend Julianne Lapp. I'm so grateful to have you with us on this Easter morning. And we look forward to celebrating today with you Unitarian Universalist style. Welcome to our service. And I look forward to sharing a beautiful celebration with you. Good morning. I'm David Hirsch, the board vice president this year. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist congregation. We are a religious community who commit ourselves to diversity. We hope to nourish human differences, those of gender, race, age, ability, sexual orientation, political views, culture, class, and religious belief. Welcome to all who treasure freedom of conscience in the search for truth. We promise to do our best to provide you a spiritual home. We extend a special welcome to our visitors today. We hope you will follow our UUC Facebook page and stay tuned for other events, such as our Monday Virtual Vespers, Wonderful Wednesdays, and Coffee and Theology on Fridays at 9 a.m. Also, families can follow our UUC Religious Exploration Facebook page. There is Children's Chapel every Sunday at 11 a.m., Boredom Busters on Tuesday and Thursday mornings, and Story Time with Miss Jenna on Saturdays. We are so excited to have you join us this morning. Good morning. My name is Peyton Carter. I'm the intern minister at UUC. Good morning. I'm Abby Boshe. So the opening we are reading this morning is by Charles Flagg. We seek life's meaning in the wonder of morning. The freshness of spring time and in each other's hearts and minds. Yet still we hope for something more. A break in the ordinary, an infusion of the unexpected, an explosion of glory. Um, miracle. A miracle. Reveal more than we hope to understand. Hi, I'm Debbie Campbell and I'll be lighting our chalice for today's service. You have an eye for miracles. Regard the bud now appearing on the bare branch. 
of the fragile young tree. It's a mere dot, a nothing, but already it's a flower, already a fruit, already its own death and resurrection. We light our chalice in peace and in friendship. My name is Ashley Curtis. I'm your worship associate today. I hope some notice first the blooms peeking in front of you you see. For others, it's the crocus or the daffodils. We hear the peepers again, and the birds with their joyful energy seem to be saying, I'm here and open for business. By the time the azaleas are out, you know that spring is here for sure. Everywhere, things seem to be opening. Our energy seems to be returning with the colors. Even though we don't know winter at its harshest, we know the return of spring. This is what we celebrate today. Spring has sprung again. The Story of Jesus There was once a little boy born to poor parents from an oppressed people in a tiny backwater village from which no one thought any good could come. Not much is known about his early years except that he was sharp of mind and large of heart and increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. It seems likely that he took seriously the religion of his people, so seriously that it set him apart from his earliest days. As a young man, he began to preach and teach and heal. He taught that all people are God's children and that it doesn't matter who you are or what you do. God loves you anyway and will embrace you with joy if you'll only turn toward that love. It is said that this boy, known in his day as Yeshua, was so filled with this love that when he spoke, it was as if God were speaking. And when you looked upon him, it was as if you were looking at God face to face. Crowds began to gather around him, crowds mostly of the poor, the disconsolate, the outcast, those whom others deemed unworthy. A community grew, a community with a welcome more wide and more deep than anyone had known before. Even some of the scholars and the priests and the well-to-do found a home with the itinerant band that followed this wandering preacher and healer. Whenever the crowds learned where he was, they followed him, and he welcomed them and spoke to them of the kingdom of God and cured those who had need of healing. He taught that God's kingdom was not some far-off dream to be yearned for, but something real within and around each of us, that it was something to be worked for. He taught that each of us, with faith, could move mountains, and that if you bring forth what is within you, what is within you will save you. He taught that love of God and love of neighbor are inextricably intertwined and that pious words alone are worth nothing. None of these teachings were well received by the authorities, of course, neither the religious authorities nor the authorities in the state who heard in his description of the kingdom of God a decidedly negative comparison with the kingdom of Caesar. Such radical egalitarianism was a threat to the status quo, and the growing crowds were worrisome too. And so Jesus was arrested, tried, and sentenced to die. On Friday evening, he was taken out, publicly humiliated and brutally flogged, and brought outside the city walls to be nailed to the cross. The crowds who had so recently invoked hymns now hurled invectives, his closest companions abandoned him and hid in fear. Yet even in the face of all this, he refused to return evil for evil, offering only love as he had all his life, praying to God from the cross for forgiveness on behalf of those who did these things. In time and in agony, Jesus died. His disciples removed his body from the cross and placed it in a stone tomb. But as the Sabbath was beginning, they could not properly prepare the body for burial. A stone was rolled in front of the entrance 
and this man in whom so many had seen God was gone. The light of the world had been snuffed out, and those who knew him were bereft. This is the time in our service where we share our deepest joys and concerns. I'm going to light this candle for all the joys and concerns that we are hearing today, and also those too silent and that are held within your hearts. I welcome you now to share your joys and concerns in this circle of care, we are here to hold space for the things that are on your hearts and minds. In this loving community, I light a candle, this candle, and the candles in my own heart for Alta Bragg, who has moved on uh, to a uh, facility on Birch Street, and I'll share more information about that on Monday in UU Connections, but she has left the hospital and um, continues in her recovery. I also light a candle for those who are working as essential workers right now and who are out front and doing the work that uh, needs to be done and it is scary every day and every day I think of those who, who put themselves in harm's way and um, continue to show up and even when it's hard and, and I give thanks for them. I light a candle for the family that we can't be present with on this Easter Sunday. I know some of you have shared that it's hard to be separated from your traditional meals and gatherings. And I hope that you will get a chance to connect with your loved ones, either by phone or in other ways, so that you can feel the circle of their care. We'll take a moment for just a few more joys and concerns that you'd like to share in this loving community. I'm going to close out our joys and concerns now. With love is the spirit of this church, and service is law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to speak the truth in love, and to help one another. Amen. Oh
really God. The Unitarian tradition tends to focus on the pre-Easter Jesus, focusing on the moral teachings and the actions that Jesus had to help others. Thomas Jefferson, who called himself a Unitarian, actually cut the miracles out of his personal Bible. And I personally uh, really relate to the radical troublemaker who hangs out with the wrong people, speaks truth to power. This is the Jesus that reminds me to pursue justice, love my neighbor, and find resurrection when we take care of each other and all of life of which we are a part. And in these times when things seem so precarious, you know, we're all looking for messages of hope, things to hold on to. What, to do, what do you use, do with the story of resurrection, the story of an empty tomb? This is a story of mystery, a story of life after death. I know I can relate to the fact that hope does not die. Hope rises again. New life is a universal theme. This is a prayer that was written uh, by a Unitarian Universalist, and it's prayer for the resurrection of the earth. Her name is Patty Wigington. The death sleep of winter has slowly faded. The rigor of the ground loosens, and the earth is once more reborn. Like Mithras and Osiris, reborn from death, life returns again to the land. Springing up as snow melts away, as the soil warms and the days grow longer, dew forms along the new sprouts of grass, bringing life back. Awaken, 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 and rise. Let the earth come to life again and welcome the light of spring. This is how I connect to resurrection. You know, I, I think of the hope that comes again after our winters and, um, you know, the snow that comes even in April and um, seems like it just keeps on coming. But somehow those flowers rise up, our hopes rise up, and we will rise through this hard time, this time of COVID, and this time where we have to find ways each day to find hope and connection with life also think of the word grace, you know, for some grace can be a rather loaded word. And I'm not talking about the kind of grace that one received, receives from some mighty deity in the sky. I'm talking about the action of grace in our lives. One way to define grace is leaving space in our lives for failure, skinning our knees and falling down and what that can gift us. And I, I think of uh, how everybody's trying each day to master their emotions and to get up and homeschool their kids and to just get through things and, and, and be in the best healthy space they can be. And, you know, everything that I've seen online about mental health and self-care tells us to give, give grace, to allow space that it's okay to not be okay. And, um, you know, grace can be resurrection uh, because we screw up, you know, and then there's that space for rising again from the screw up. And uh, so failure offers gifts. Sure. I remember how frustrated I was when I was five years old and learning to ride my bike. You might remember the days of either teaching someone to ride a bike or learning yourself, or if you haven't learned, it, it's, it's a process. My best friend down the street had his whole family around him and a lot of kids in the neighborhood. They were cheering him on. And I was so jealous. I knew that I wanted to be a bike rider also. And I had a pink bike with tassels on the handles. And while this was embarrassing since I was not really into pink, I still knew that it would get sufficiently muddy on all the trails behind my house. And I would turn it into a proper dirt bike if I could only learn how to ride it. I remember being by myself and falling and falling on the ground. And I was pretty upset that this triumphant crowd wasn't present when I finally did set sail. And I, I just remember if I keep trying, if I keep trying, I can, I can ride this bike and I can have that, that moment in the wind. And my knees were skinned and my pride even more so. 
But after what seemed like hours, I finally got that bike moving in, in a straight line, you know, not just falling <laughs> to the ground. And I kept adjusting the handlebars and I pumped my feet and there was nothing better than mastering that impossible time. And later on, I gathered up the crowd of people to watch me as I sailed down the street like a champion. <laughs> but that was grace. And, you know, I think of the days when um, you know, I'd rather uh, stay in bed with a cover over my head and I get up and I do the things that I need to do. And sometimes I don't remember something or, or I forget or I, I'm short tempered. And then I take a breath and I keep trying, just like that riding the bike. I keep trying and I, I look for the hope that rises again. You know, there's room in this universe for mistakes. And, um, you know, I, I think um, the human Jesus was a great uh, example of, you know, being with people in their less than perfect selves. You know, he... Uh, spoke a lot about grace and forgiveness and Scotty McClendon in Exploring Easter um, talked about this in the UU world. Um, he asked us to imagine how utterly astonished the male disciples must have been when Mary and the other women brought the news of the empty tomb. Astonished and hopeful for the women had been told, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here but is risen. Could it be true? Was there some hope after all? Although these words seemed only an idle tale to most of the disciples who didn't believe the women, Peter's astonished hope got the best of him. He jumped up and ran back to the tomb himself, finding the stone rolled away and only the linen cloths in which Jesus' body had been wrapped remaining within. At that point, his hope must have been astonishing within this. And, you know, I, I, I think now, you know, you know, we, we're looking for hope. We're looking for signs of um, something wonderful happen. And, and I do this every spring, but especially now, <laughs> I, um, I jump onto good news like it's, it, it's a life preserver. Um, you know, I, instead of just looking down, we need to be looking up. We need to be listening instead of stopping up our ears, unless it's bad news, and sometimes we need to stop our ears. Tasting before we swallow, smelling the flowers, not passing them by, feeling deeply rather than always numbing ourselves, but also taking breaks. You know, there's, there's so many things to living a life that's present and also the balance of that. As another Unitarian minister wrote, Richard Gilbert, he said, a tomb is no place to stay. A tomb is no place to stay when each morning announces our reprieve. And we know we are granted yet another day. A tomb is no place to stay when life laughs a welcome to hearts which have been away too long. Words and symbols matter. You know, I think of um, the hope of the, the Easter lily and, you know, all the blooms that come up. It reminds me each spring that uh, the days are growing longer and that life does return. And while I don't believe in a physically resurrected Jesus, I do believe in the hope that we can give one another with a message of love and the idea that People are worthy of love, our neighbors, especially those who are suffering right now and who are afraid or, or, or are concerned about work, concerned about their bills. You know, now more than ever is a time for us to give grace to others and to give grace to ourselves. What is Easter Sunday to a Unitarian Universalist without the literal thought of a risen Jesus taken from his orthodoxy, how can we reframe holidays and ideas we've been handed? There is a reframing on resurrection thoughts about what faith and grace can be. One of the most powerful steps that a person can take is to redefine our own beliefs. Instead of what some council of men decided 
2,000 years ago or even 30 years ago. Resurrection has had many meanings for Unitarian Universalists. In relation to the Easter story of Jesus, his disciples came to believe that he was alive again with them. You use, might say, primarily in a spiritual sense, a religious movement was launched. It has given individuals and groups hope for 2,000 years that they can find positive personal rebirth and be transformed in beloved community here and now. We Unitarian Universalists have picked up on that and are striving for our fulfillment for social justice, our loving our neighbors, and even those who have wronged us and ourselves, loving ourselves as well. In Unitarian Universalism, we focus less about what you specifically believe and more about what you do with those beliefs. Do your beliefs lead you to deeper connections? Do they give you life? Do you practice compassion? Do you help others? Do you find times for grace and renewal? Will you turn over the tables of the money lenders? Will you be with the women at the well? Will you see the dignity in yourself and in your neighbor? What can be resurrected this spring? I hope you find those moments of riding on your bike and the joy that comes when you take a chance. And I ask you to take a chance on yourself. This is a great time for a personal reflection. We have a lot of time at home, even though we might be busy with our jobs and with life. This is a time when we can go deeper. And in this time of Easter and eggs and spring, oh my, I hope that you find something that helps you rise above the pain in the world. Something that gives you hope. Much love to you and amen. Hi, this is Scott Fulton, President of the Prairie Enthusiasts. On behalf of our organization, I'd like to thank you at the Unitarian Universalist Society in Eau Claire for your 50-50 Share the Plate contribution to our organization. The mission of the Prairie Enthusiasts is to restore and preserve prairies, oak savannas, and other related natural communities of the Upper Midwest. These land-based ecosystems harbor more biodiversity per unit area than any other on Earth, including the Amazon rainforest. What they have in common is dependency on fire for their survival. First Nation peoples burned these landscapes frequently prior to European settlement, and the suppression of fire, together with conversion to agriculture, have caused the loss of all but a few small remaining remnants. The Prairie Enthusiast is a volunteer-based community conservation organization with 11 local chapters in Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Illinois, including our Chippewa Savannah chapter in the Eau Claire Menominee area. We are an accredited land trust so that we can protect land in perpetuity for conservation. We also work to educate people about the natural history and best management practices for these natural communities. But most importantly, we get out and work on the land to restore these treasures to ecological health for future generations. To do this, our volunteers partner with other organizations, conservation professionals, government agencies, and very importantly, private landowners like Karen and Marty Voss, who I understand are members of your congregation. Please check us out on the web or Facebook. And thank you again very much for this unexpected but certainly welcome show of support. for your support of UUC during these difficult times. While we can't be present together to pass an offering basket, we encourage you to go online at uueauclair.com and you can, at the top of the page, there's a donate now button. You can indicate um, either for the general fund or also for to this month's 50-50 recipient, which is Prairie Enthusiast. Thank you so much for your support as we continue to reach out and to do the good work in this Unitarian Universalist congregation. 
we are a community that cares and um, it means so much to be here with all of you. Thank you for your support. The story of our lives. There is a promise here. And as Martin Luther noted, the promise is written not just in books, but in every springtime leaf. It's even closer than that. The question is not whether we believe in resurrection, but whether we have known it. Known it in our own lived experience, seen it in the lives of others, felt it in the world around us. Persephone returns the world to light. Osiris is resurrected by the power of love of his wife Isis. The phoenix is born anew from its own ashes. Jesus leaves behind the tomb. Snow and ice melts, giving way to new life. The promise of our Unitarian Universalist faith is the promise of the seasons and these stories. Winter is not perpetual. The wheel will keep on turning. The tomb is not the end. We affirm the promise of rebirth, of resurrection, of life's ultimate victory over death, of hope's triumph over hopelessness, not just as some abstract concept, but as the miraculous reality of our lives. This is what we celebrate today. Thank you for joining in community for this Sunday service. I'll be extinguishing our chalice today with the words of Elizabeth Sal Jones. We have extinguished this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Be well. For all those who celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, May this day be another affirmation of divine love and promise. For all those who see the eternal story of new spring and life beginning anew, may you breathe deeply of a season of promise and hope. For all who are experiencing despair or hopelessness this Easter, may you find in the darkness or depression a doorway to light and warmth that offers you freedom. For all of us, Together, we can do what no one isolated person can do. Rolling the heavy stone aside reminds us we are far more powerful than we ever could be on our own. Our offering of strong hands to help, our prayers made real. Let us begin again to love.